Hi, I'm Tom Hess, and I'm glad that you've come here to check out this video to learn more about effective guitar teaching methods. Now, if you've been teaching guitar for any length of time and have some good experience doing it, then you probably already understand that a single method of teaching guitar, no matter how good that method is, is just simply not going to help you to reach and connect with all the students that you have. You probably have found, if you've done this before, that some of your students are going to respond very well and get a lot of good value and results and make a lot of progress under that single method, but other students just aren't going to get that same result. They're not going to get that same benefit. They're not going to make that same connection, not only with the method that you're using, but also with you personally as a teacher. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is to see your teaching and the, the teaching methods that you use as small component parts in each of the areas or challenges that your students are likely to have. Okay, so let me give you some examples. Let's say that you've got a student or a set of students that need to learn some music theory concepts. Okay, and you may have one method to explain the circle of fifths or how, you know, what chords fit into what keys or something like that. What you need to do is have three or four different methods to explain that same concept. Okay, now what, I, what I'm going to encourage you to do is, as you're teaching uh, music theory concepts or whatever, make notes as you do it and see where some students respond well and where they seem to not respond. You know, what's, what's causing them to either not understand it, what's causing them to not implement it or apply it, or what's causing them, in your mind, to not even be interested in the topic that you're discussing. These are very important things. If you keep a file on each one of the major areas that you're teaching in, whether it's music theory or some specific guitar technique or songwriting or ear training or just general um, you know, inspiration and creativity and uh, commitment and, and enthusiasm and uh, dedication from your students, if you keep files in those areas and you just make notes to yourself, what's going to happen is you're going to build a database of problems or a database of challenges that you encounter over and over and over again on a reoccurring basis with students that you teach. Now what that's going to do is it's going to give you some really good clarity on why or where students aren't getting that connection, they're not making the breakthrough, they're not, they're not grasping what's going on or even being committed or interested in what's going on. Once you collect that data, it gets much easier for you to start thinking about, okay, in this music theory concept, these three problems keep recurring over and over, not always with the same students, but with, with different students. That's where you want to start building two or three or four different strategies to teach that one component. Okay, and what I would invite you to do is document that process for yourself. It doesn't have to be, you know, word for word, the, a whole script of what you're going to say to your students, but just have a basic outline and you might have something like um, teaching the circle of fifths, method one. Teaching the circle of fifths, method two. Teaching the circle of fifths, method three. This, what this will do is when you're teaching the circle of fifths, as an example, with a new student, you're immediately going to try method one. And if you sense that there's any problem with them grasping it or being excited about it, you just, you just forget it and go immediately to method two. If that doesn't work, Forget that and go immediately to, to method three. And what's going to happen is over time you're going to get really good and it's going to become systematized that you're always going to be able to find the right connection, the right puzzle piece for that student in all those different areas. Okay, now here's something else that's very important is that as a guitar teacher, we normally think of ourselves as people that need to, to teach something you know, content, concepts, techniques to students. And in fact, your role as a teacher, if you really want to be highly effective and be one of the best in the world, is not going to come down to how much stuff that you know or even how good you are at explaining it. It's going to come down to your ability to create and sustain your students' commitment and enthusiasm for the learning process over a long period of time. Okay, so even if you're not a very experienced teacher, or even if you're not even a very good teacher, if you can get excellent 
at inspiring and encouraging students to stay motivated for a long period of time, those students are going to make massive progress and get massive results out of you, even if, like I said, even if you're not even very good at explaining stuff. They're, when they leave your lesson and they go home for that week, they're going to be on fire to practice. They're going to be on fire to, to study and commit to the whole process. This is so important. In fact, this has been one of the very keys to my success at training countless numbers of guitar, t guitar players to become excellent virtuoso or professional guitar players as they progressed. It wasn't necessarily that I was so great, although I do think I'm pretty good if I do say so myself. It really wasn't that. It really was my ability to get into their minds and hearts and get them motivated for a long period of time. That was the big key. Now, how do you do that? How do you get there? Well, what motivates one person isn't what necessarily what motivates somebody else. So what I did is went through the same process I just described using the teaching of the circle of fifths example. I would work on helping to inspire people and what worked for one person didn't work for another. So what I did was I would document the process and have a different method. I have three or four or five or six different methods that I would use and if this didn't work I would immediately go to this. If that didn't work I immediately would go to that. And it, it was so much more effective than me just sort of trying to motivate somebody on the fly. All right, Now where am I going with all of this stuff that I'm talking about? You came here because you wanted to get more information about effective guitar teaching methods. Okay. Now my core message to you in this video is to think about each of the big chunk component areas where you're teaching and make little separate modules or methods or strategies to help students get those results. Now to get you started, if you're not really sure how to do that or if it sounds like, well, that's going to take a long time to go through that whole process, there are some shortcuts because as you probably know there are other people before you have all, who have already done this stuff. They've already you know, created all of these things. Okay? I've made a whole career out of doing this. All right, what I'm going to do is invite you to come to my website. I'm not selling anything to you here. I've got some free online resources, mainly some self-assessments that you can take. And you come and you take these assessments and you're going to discover just simply by just the questions that I'm asking you you're going to discover some things that you probably had never thought of before or at least not thought of it in the same way before. Now once you take those tests, I'm going to send you some very specific and relevant feedback depending on how you answered each question. And in that feedback there's going to be some very specific things that you can apply and implement in a very, very short period of time. Okay? These are not big theoretical concepts that are going to take you months or years to apply. They're going to be things that you can use right away. In addition to that, I'm going to give you some very good feedback, uh, some video um, resources for you as well on some highly effective guitar teaching methods and models that I've used to make well into multiple six figures annual income every single year. So that will help you get started and, and sort of refocusing how you see everything that you're doing not only in terms of your effectiveness as a teacher, but in your ability to make massive amounts of more money than you probably ever even imagined a guitar teacher can actually make.